a few years ago, uh, as elders, we read a book, um, and it really uh, resonated with us. And the book uh, was this idea. It, said, it, it was entitled, They Smell Like Sheep. And um, it's this idea, this philosophy that somebody um, who is going to be an elder, going to be a shepherd of people, they should smell like people. They should smell like sheep. Um, it's not about this incredibly perfect bar that is, is you always hit. It's just living in confession that through Christ um, you're redeemed and you have a compassion and a mercy um, for the body and for the, the, the sheep, you know, the people that are God's placed under your care. And um, we have, uh, I remember we had a, a group, a certain group that was doing that every year and kind of just wrestling with that. And uh, Drew and Stacy, the Wrights, came into our church and had been here for a while. And, and I remember your name came up and we're like, man, you know, uh, we just see uh, Drew, he smells <laughs> a lot. <laughs> he smells a lot like, like sheep. And uh, we, every year, actually, I feel like about every week, we're wrestling with this idea, this thought, God, what do you want? Not, not what do we want, not what feels good for us, but what do you want? And so um, in that pursuit, sometimes um, you, you have to lay your heart out there and say, God, you speak and you do your thing. And um, one of the questions is constant before us uh, to give you an inside look um, into what we do is, God, do you want us to keep doing this? Not keep serving the church or being in the church or doing that, but not loving God, but keep actually holding this role of a shepherd because we take it very seriously and we don't always do good at it, to be honest with you, you know this. But it is a big deal to us. And so this past week, um, actually backing up a year ago probably, um, we had a, a big crossroads moment and it was this idea that what are we going to do? And uh, do you want us to continue? And, and every person was, we said, hey, we all need to pray and put ourselves on the line. And we all decided to lean in for a little while longer. And last week, uh, Drew came to us and shared uh, something in his heart about, about that. And I want you to share um, what you shared with us. Yeah, so <clears throat> what, what I shared with the guys is, is back, like Sam mentioned about a year ago, we all kind of discussed this, you know, are we, are we going to lean, continue to lean in to this calling of an elder? <clears throat> and at that time, um, I had shared with them, I said, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence. I don't, I'm not, I'm not sold, completely sold that I, I want to, that I'm being called to it, but yes, I'm, I'm going to, you know. <clears throat> and then over this, this past year, um, I, it, it's something that I've wrestled with a lot as, as far as with God in that, what, what are you calling me to? Are you, are you still calling me to be an, an elder? And, and I know that's one of the things that, as I shared with Sam and the, and the rest of the elders, um, you know, in my past, when I've seen other churches, when someone steps out of the eldership, it, it's, it's typically for one of two reasons. One, either the rest of the elders are saying, hey, I see something in your life that you're, you need to remove yourself from this. Or that individual says, hey, there's something in my life that I need to be removed. I, I need to step away from this. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't, I wasn't seeing that, I, you know, <laughs> not that I was looking for, <laughs> right. for a, 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 a definitive, you know, God, what is it in my life that I'm no longer worthy to be an elder? And I, and I never got that confirmation from God as far as, oh, this, this is the, the thing here. And, but I did, I have had this overwhelming feeling as I've, as, as I've spoken with God in that, I don't feel like I'm being called to continue to be an elder at this point in time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you, yeah. you mentioned something that made me laugh. Uh, at South, you didn't say it here, but 
a lot of times in the church, a guy's an elder until he dies, right? It, it doesn't even matter if he comes to church. He doesn't even have to come to church all the time. He just, he's got the title of it. And we have really not wanted this to be a title, but a calling. And uh, we haven't always understood the calling or uh, done great at it, but I, I feel like God is using um, uh, us. And, and so um, we're like, how do you do this? And when he brought that to us, and I, I just was so excited because it wasn't, uh, hey, we're leaving the church. Hey, we're, we're rolling out. Hey, I, every single uh, Thursday, he runs a prayer meeting at, at South and is faithful to that and has loved that. And he teaches a Bible study where my son's involved in that and some other people. And uh, when he's done that, it's just like, he's like, I, I want to do this. I'm going to serve still. Because the calling that God has put on our lives to live godly and to be godly and to be who God wants us to be doesn't stop at failure and doesn't stop when we uh, decide to do something else in our calling. And so um, we wanted to let them know um, because you, you could be praying for uh, Drew and Stacy, uh, be praying for your elders. Um, we're excited about what God's doing. We know that God doesn't make mistakes, that God wouldn't lay on your heart. And we trust you because I said it uh, when you left. Well, I'm going to say it up here when you're up here. Okay. Before you came into this group, we felt you smell like sheep. Going out of this group, we still feel like you smell like sheep. And your impact in this church is going to be felt because God doesn't call you to nothing. He doesn't just say, okay, you're not an elder anymore, so you don't do anything. Um, and so I know you're going to be actively involved in this church, and we're excited about that. Anything else you'd like to say? Yeah, I, I, I know one of the things that I, I didn't mention this at South, but it had been on my mind, and I know that I had shared it with the, the, the eldership, is that... Um, one of the things that I wrestled with is I could continue to serve as an elder, even though I wasn't called, didn't feel that calling. But it was, it's a conviction on my heart that that would tarnish this calling to the bride of Christ to be a, an elder. And so mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to get in the way of something like that, you know, yeah. es especially any, any time that God calls you to something or calls you out of something. Um, however you want to look at it I think we need to take that very seriously and and not and, and weigh it because as I described to, to you guys and one of the things I was looking for was am I just in a valley right now mm -hmm. and so I, it would be very easy at on any given week and you said we, we do this so as, as, mm -hmm. as elders we we will come in and we'll say, you know, I'm just not, boy, I am not doing well this week. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm so unworthy to be an elder. Well, if, if every week we jumped out of being an elder, well, boy, we're, we're cycling through people <laughs> here at the church. So one of the, one of the things that, that weighed on my mind was I need to figure out, am I in, in this ebb and flow of a valley and a peak and, and, and am I making this decision based upon really that or is it truly what God's calling putting on my heart and and so I think that that in and of itself takes some time sometimes to discern mm -hmm. um, because you know I don't I don't want to be making a knee-jerk reaction mm -hmm. but over the course of time here I've kind of just had that calling that, yeah well, in, in how we kind of do things, it probably scare you, <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, it's like, well, okay, God, what do you want? And we, oh, yeah, I don't know. You know, like somebody's in need in, in the church, and we're not, uh, I think to a fault sometimes, we haven't publicized uh, what the Lord has done in some, through us even, but we trust one another. That's one of the things that I feel like with your eldership we trust one another. And so um, sometimes when you don't know and you're walking by faith, not by sight, remember, by faith, not by sight, don't you feel like, how do you really know if that's what God wants and not? And one of the things how we've always rolled for a lot of years now is if, if God, if this wasn't your time, then there'd be some opposition within the eldership. And we'd say, Drew, we think this is a valley. What's going on with you? Let's pray through this. But unilaterally across the board, we're like, man, we love 
what God's doing in your heart. We love what God's doing in your family. We love your family. And we believe in your calling. Either way, because it is a calling from God. And we support it. And I think that that might have been a surprise to you. I don't know, but I feel like just the response of the other elders, we're excited. There's no magical number that you have to have as elders. And so we're not upset with that because we have trust in there and we're, um, we're interested to see what God's going to do next. Um, you don't always know what um, God is doing. And I don't think we have to be in the know of that. I think we have to be faithful and we have to have obedience over understanding. And so we're sad um, in one side to see you go, but we're also thrilled because we know this is what God has done. It's not because there's been some crazy, oh, you're not really being honest with where you're at. There's not some hidden thing. And, and so we just want to be transparent with you guys and have you keep praying. Um, your responsibility is this body and glorifying God and, and lifting your guys up. Uh, we love you guys. We care about you guys. And we're going to keep moving forward and let God call more people. So, yeah. As we're sitting up here, I remember yeah. when we, you remember that Sunday that we were appointed as elders? <laughs> yeah, I do. I don't know what you're going to say. Do you're you, scaring me. Do you want to, do you want to share? I mean, <laughs> you mean with you? What happened? Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, when, I think it was a... When, when, when are you ever going to have a better time to I, I think that, I, yeah, I think, well, <laughs> you know, um, I want to say something else first about you that <laughs> you have proven true. We always call him Awkward Drew or the mayor of Awkwardville yeah. because if there's anybody going to say something, you know, and like I remember I was actually thinking back to the you the boxing scene with the rocky scene remember samford you know and you were you were his trainer and he was rocky and we had this contender and it was this it was this based on the scripture where paul says i want you to know how hard i am contending for you and so our sharing life conference was contender that year and you were willing to put in uh, put yourself out there and, and just be foolish and <laughs> so I don't know if I should tell it, but this guy, we get done, we, we're down on our knees up here, you know, because in, in his day one of being an elder, and, and I look down, his pants are unzipped, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm going, you got to be kidding me, Drew. I knelt what? in front of the entire church, and I think we were on our knees for like 10 oh, minutes. Oh, it was crazy. Had, it was had, crazy. had some of the older fellows behind us. I, oh, yes, it was bad. It was ugly. And I'm like, you know, <laughs> this is the mark. But I want you to hear something, um, as awkward as this is, if you, this is a safe place to be broken and this is the mark of your church. It's not about us being, you know, so high and mighty. An elder is a foot washer. It's somebody who's willing to be a fool and say, I'll become even more undignified than this. Now, I didn't, I didn't unzip anything to be up here with you, uh, but... Uh, uh, just, just so you know, yeah. I, I checked before I came up. <laughs> I, just, I, I, I think, didn't want to repeat the same right. mistake. Man, I, I, I do appreciate that. But uh, <laughs> hey, um, the calling of this church is to lift high the name of Jesus. It's to share Christ. And the impact of this um, body of Christ is felt on the south side of Muncie. It's felt here. It's felt in this community. And it's felt around the world. And this is a big deal. Um, but it's a big deal where we are trusting the Lord and knowing that God's got, um, got us. And we're excited about that. And so I appreciate you um, um, being a voice for so many years and so long that's not a yes person that you, um, I don't know how many times we come in and you've got a really weird bunch of elders that, are, that think way differently than I do. And I think that's so good. And you've been such a great voice for God in this eldership. And you're a great voice in this church because you love Jesus and you love these people. And so thank you. Appreciate that. No more awkwardness. I'll try not to. Today. To Today, yeah. But it's going to happen. I know it is.